may not have everybody here for the ones I've spoken to this morning. It has to do with uh, the people for me. The people who are here are the ones who are supposed to be here. Now, there's a multiplier effect to what we do in many cases, not just this seminar. You'll hear some information. You'll get some information. You'll, you'll be able to ask some questions. But in some cases, it's not just for you. Sometimes you can pass this information on to others, whether they're family members or friends. Uh, there are folk that are not aware of the benefits provided by Oakland County, provided by the federal government, provided by uh, uh, Holly Cemetery, provided by whoever has to do with veterans. So, so that's, that's the personal side. That's the one-on-one. -on -one. Then you have the families. There are a lot of families that are not aware, whether spouses, whether, whether children or grandchildren. They're not aware that some of their relatives, their older veterans in their families, have benefits sitting out there waiting on them. So some information that you'll get, go ahead and share that with others. Not a problem. Go ahead and do that. We encourage that. But that information is here. We do this every year. I don't care if it's one person here. As far as I'm concerned, we're going to try to reach out. Mr. Garth Wood. Uh, as he indicated, I've, I've been coming here since uh, this program has been put on, and I really appreciate the opportunity to come here. Uh, the Southfield Veterans Commission uh, is the only city uh, veterans commission in Oakland County. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if there are any others in the state. If they are, there are, I'm not aware of them. But um, so the citizens of Southfield should feel blessed that they have uh, these individuals who are advocates for veterans, who put programs like this together, uh, who make sure that the veterans in their city get to the resources they need. It's, it's, it's really a tremendous asset uh, to have for this city. Um, I'm, Di I'm Garth Wooten. Uh, I am the division manager for Oakland County Veterans Services. We're a division of Oakland County government, so we are funded through your taxpayer dollars if you're an Oakland County resident. And our role is to make sure that the veterans and their dependents in Oakland County get the benefits that they're entitled to. to. Uh, we have, how do we do that? We have 12 uh, accredited representatives who are accredited with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs so we can file claims directly with the VA. Um, we assist those individuals in applying. So we'll, when somebody comes into our office, we're gonna do a thorough interview with them talk to them about all the benefits that may be available. Then if they determine that they want to apply for any of those benefits that we discussed, we're going to actually complete the application form for them, um, have them sign it, review it. Uh, then we're going to submit that to the appropriate location because different claims go to different locations. And we're going to do the follow-up. We're going to get supporting documentation if it's necessary to support that claim, whether it's medical evidence, military records, sworn affidavits, things like that. We're going to submit that with the claim. Uh, we're going to follow up. We have, uh, since we're accredited with the VA, we have what are called PIV cards, personal identity verification cards, which the VA issues to us, uh, which we plug into our computers at our desks, and it allows us to access that VA claims information. So once we file that claim, I can go in, check, make sure that it is being processed, that the VA received the evidence, um, what the status of that claim is, because what we find is a lot of times uh, veterans are most stressed about what's going on with my claim, what's happening. They want to make sure that it's being processed, because it is a long process, unfortunately. Um, so we have access to that, and we can, if somebody calls in and says, you know, what's going on, what's the status of my claim, we can get on our computer and, and provide them with an answer. Um, we also do appeals. If, if we have a if we don't think the initial VA determination is appropriate, we can assist an individual with appeal. We can go to the board, all the way up to the Board of Veterans Appeals uh, and assist them in, in preparing appeals all the way up there. So um, we really do everything from the beginning to the end till we get the conclusion that we really want. Um, we work with all different parts of the VA. Uh, I think we're gonna have every, all, there's essentially the VA is broken down into three different areas. There's the Veterans Benefits Administration, which is where you get the compensation claims, the VA pension claims. Um, there is the uh, VHA, which is the Veterans Health Administration, which is the healthcare side. These are the medical facilities 
And then we have the NCA, which is the National Cemetery Administration, which is, uh, you're going to hear from Mr. Luera a little bit later, talk about Great Lakes National Cemetery. Uh, we interact with all three of those um, areas of the VA. Um, we are your advocate. We're here to help you. Uh, we want to make sure that, again, you get what you're entitled to. So um, we don't work for the VA. We work for Oakland County, but we also work for you as a veteran. Um, I normally go into a little bit of detail about benefits, but uh, I think we're going to have subject matter experts on just about everything here today. We're going to, I think we're going to have somebody from the hospital, somebody from the cemetery. Uh, are you going to have anybody from VBA, from the regional office? Hopefully. Okay. Um, so I won't talk about specifics, but again, uh, I will be here if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer those, talk to you about what we can do to make sure you get what you're entitled to. So thank you very much. Good morning. Um, my name is uh, Michelle Friedman Apple. I am the judge in Oak Park, so neighbor. Um, my legal jurisdiction or the court covers Oak Park, Huntington Woods, Pleasant Ridge, and Royal Oak Township, but we have created a veterans court. And as a result of that, we get referrals from surrounding courts. So actually, I end up with cases from this jurisdiction and surrounding jurisdictions. So before I get into the details of it, I, I think many people have heard me speak here before, but the Veterans Court is a concept that started in Rochester, New York. And about 10 years ago, it showed up here in Michigan, actually the judge in Lansing, Michigan. Um, was the first um, veterans court. But in 2013, the Michigan legislature actually codified it, created it as a legal entity, and created funding sources for the court. And what it is, is providing an opportunity to address the issues of the vets that end up in the criminal justice system without simply punishing them. It became clear that the various members of the military that were returning or had returned and were in the workforce were having issues that were interfering with their ability to succeed. And once they got into the criminal justice system, it was creating bigger problems, unlike the problems you would see in typical situations. So a very small criminal problem would turn into a much larger criminal problem because of the underlying problems that the individual may be suffering. So what this court has created is really a group of people, a, coll a collaboration of people like you that I have available to me in order to deal with the vet and his or her problem. And as a practical matter, most of the people sitting at the tables here are people that come into my court to help me with the situation that I have. Um, I have a VJO assigned to my court, and that individual acts as a caseworker. Uh, Nanette Collins, I'm sure some of you have met her. She usually is at these events. Um, we've had um, Garth Wooten comes to every session of my vet court to help me deal with financial issues. Um, we've had financial lectures, people coming in. We have housing people coming in. Because what happens is this small problem, even though it's a criminal justice problem, cannot be solved if you don't have a place to live, if you're not getting the medical care you need, if you're not getting the mental health care you need, if you are self-medicating and using um, controlled substance, drugs, or whatever the issue is. So we take a whole person approach that the vet comes in and is immediately, once they, and it's a voluntary um, commitment because once you're in, you're subject to drug testing, it's a two year program, but you come in and you get all of the assets or all of the, a bit, all of the programs that I have access to. The vets are required to do um, controlled substance evaluations, mental health evaluations, um, physical evaluations. And we have people there to walk them through because we have a case manager assigned to our court. They are walked through the VA system because, as most of you know, oftentimes there's a defiance in reference to going back into the VA system and using the services that certain and the benefits that they have earned 
and are entitled to and would actually benefit them. So the program, as I said, is a two-year program, and it's designed to promote sobriety, recovery, stability through a coordinated effort. People are homeless. We work on housing. People don't have transportation issues. We have money, and it's a grant-funded court. So there's money we have for bus tickets. We are working on a program now that we will be able to use Uber for our vets. Um, that there will be money, we will be able to fund an account to get someone where they need to go. And just this week, uh, Mr. Wooten was, Garth was, actually we had a session yesterday, one of our vets doesn't have a car and he needs to go down to the Pontiac office to deal with an overpayment issue because now his benefits have been cut in half and we don't think that there really was an overpayment situation. We think he didn't properly report certain income. So we arranged um, with bus tickets, DDOT tickets, and then hopefully we have some other people who are mentors within the system, and that's a separate issue, to get him to um, the office in Pontiac so he can deal with it. So it's a really hands-on program. Right now, I have about 25 vets in the program. Um, we've had five graduations, and actually those are pretty good um, events to um, witness. Uh, the vets speak, and the vets are at a point usually where they're able and willing to share um, what they've gone through and the benefits that they've received from the program. And um, we've had some pretty good moments and because we get to know each other pretty well. We've spent a couple years together. It's a small group of people. We interact um, several times a month. The probation officers are seeing them weekly. Um, they're being tested several times a week, so they're in and out of the court all the time. Um, so it's a program that I'm pretty proud of. Our biggest challenge is identifying the people early on so that we can get them into the program. And we're trying to get better at it, and I think we have gotten better. Um, and as I said, now that we're up and running, we have the judges from Ferndale and Royal Oak and Hazel Park and Madison Heights and Southfield referring to the Oak Park Court. There's a vet court in Novi, and there's a vet court in Waterford. So that's another thing we try to do. If something happens in Waterford, but the vet lives closer to my jurisdiction, we try to transfer them so that trans transportation doesn't become an issue. So all of you really make my job easier because I'm accessing all the services that you're going to hear about today. And my role in all of this is minimizing the impact of the crime um, waiving fines and costs when I can, reducing charges when I can, and um, informing and educating and promoting the services that you work so hard to make available. And I feel honored that I'm able to do it. And I thank you. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Carolyn Miller. I am with Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence's office. I've been with the Congresswoman since she... Um, since she ran in 2014, I was actually on her campaign side. I handled her, I handled her administrative uh, work. And just a brief bio about myself, I, um, this is actually my second member of Congress that I work for. I've worked for a uh, former Congresswoman Carolyn Cheese Kilpatrick in her press and communication side. For this Congresswoman, I do her casework. And one of my issue areas is a uh, veterans issue area, which is why I'm here today. Um, the Congresswoman um, is actually at the um, Race for the Cure event this morning. I have reached out to my colleagues to see if she possibly could stop by and say a few words. I haven't gotten any response back yet. So I'll leave the actual what's going on in Washington to the Congresswoman. But I will tell you what I do on a daily basis. I have about 25 cases right now that are veteran related. And the sad part is we have two World War II veterans who never knew the benefits they were entitled to. So they're 93, 94 years old, never filed a claim, and now we're going back because now they need aid and assistance. And one way of immediately getting that is uh, if they're in a nursing home. But they, they live at home, they're, you know, they're still married, and so we're trying to find a way to get that done 
immediately. The good thing is, by the relationships that we have with the uh, Regional Benefits Office on Michigan Avenue, by them being over 85, we can expedite those claims up. But there's a lot of paperwork and making sure that they get their benefits. And a lot of times, we've made house calls. So the Congresswoman office will make house calls for veterans who can't make it out, who don't drive anymore. Maybe their kids are a little far. So we will go out. That is only in the 14th district, though. Our resources are really just for the 14th. If we get paperwork for a veteran who lives in the 13th, 12th, or whatever, we will gladly take it over to that office because, again, we have relationships with the other congressional offices who do uh, veterans work. And so um, on a daily basis, make get about 10 or 15 calls saying, you know, what am I entitled to? I didn't know. No one told me. Um, it's really sad for us, but it actually kicks us in gear to say, okay, what can we do? What can we do to make the rest of their life a little easier? Um, we've been successful. I, w I would definitely say that we have been really successful in getting the benefits for, for our veterans. We get referrals that way. Events like this, we get um, referrals. The main thing we need when you come in is a privacy release form, which allows us to advocate on your behalf. We always ask, do you have your DD-214? That makes our job a lot easier because we can expedite a little quicker. If, we do not, if you do not, more than likely, I will give you an SF-180. It's a request pertaining to medical records or military records, and I will automatically check that box to give you another copy. With that additional copy, give it to a, a friend, a family member, put it in a safe space. So just in case something happens, somebody knows where the documents are. Order additional documents. What else, what else do we have going on? As you know, the uh, former president commissioned a Vietnam veteran lapel pins. So the Congresswoman is one of the few offices in the state of Michigan that uh, passed those out. We still have pins. The proclamations are dated because they have the former president's signature on them. And the Vietnam Veteran Association in Washington, D.C. does not know if the new current president is going to commission those. So we do have the pins, the proclamations, no. So if you know someone who served in that era who did not receive a pin, they can call the office. I have business cards on the back table, and we can get that out to them. We are in the process of planning something similar to this, a veterans town hall. Congresswoman will take questions, offer resources. The projected date is June the 16th, but I'll have that confirmed by Monday. Location will be the Michigan Veterans Foundation on uh, Grand River. It's a new facility. Um, Tyrone Chapman is executive director. So that's something coming down the pipeline. She's also going to do a town hall in uh, Royal Oak Township, which is one of her cities. And that is projected for June the 19th, which is a Monday from 6 to 8. So again, um, if you give me your card, I can confirm those and give you the email with the flyer. The uh, John Dingo VA Hospital is having a town hall Monday. I have flyers on the back table for that. What else is there? Hmm. I don't know if there are like any widows or anything like that who, you know, you were married to the veteran you know, when he passed, there's benefits that you're entitled to as well. So definitely um, speak to some of your veteran service organization officers. You can come back and talk to me. And if I can't help you, I will get you the help that you need. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, my name is Thomas Dixon. I'm the president of the Student Veterans of America chapter at Lawrence Tech. And give you a little background on myself. I was in the Navy for four years. Uh, yeah, and uh, I got out in 2014. I started going to college at Schoolcraft uh, out in Livonia. Then I joined the reserves because I didn't really know what I was doing with myself. And I know the military gives you some support, so I got on the reserves and then I ended up transferring to Lawrence Tech and I got involved with the uh, student veterans group there. And really what we do is it's just a really strong support network. Um, it's run by vets. We're all going through school together. We're all taking similar classes. We can help each other out with classes. And, you know, we're just tied in with the community. I'm here with you guys now, thanks to the vets group. So, um, yeah, it's a great group. We learn a whole lot from the community. One thing I wanted to share with you guys was uh, something I picked up at school. There's uh, 
a group called Disabled American Veterans, and they they will really go to bat for you to get you your benefits. And there's a, a story they told me about a Vietnam vet who had no idea they had benefits. They were living on the street. They were homeless. And this group came out and took care of their records for them, got them enrolled in school on voc rehab, and she ended up working for the VA. She's, you know, ragged the richest story. So if you know any veterans that are going to college, please encourage them to get in touch with their student veterans chapter. It's kind of like a fraternity. And we really help each other out. So, First of all, I'd like to uh, recognize Mr. Garth Wooten. He is the uh, president of the advisory committee at the Great Lakes National Cemetery. And that team, what they do, they help out the cemetery as far as if a veteran has an issue or if there's anything that uh, concerns that they may have, they have a monthly meeting. And uh, I've been kind of busy, Garth. So we've had our assistant director represent the cemetery. But I hear nothing but raving reviews on all the support that you guys are giving him and the cemetery. So thank you for that. As far as these different uh, events that we go to and we speak at, Dr. Carruthers is correct as far as the folks taking back this information that we present and using that information for their uh, benefit because they are the benefits that we have earned as veterans. I am also a 20 year retiree from the, I know a lot of folks don't consider us a branch of the service, but the Air Force. So, <laughs> but uh, I've, been out of great, I've been out of Great Lakes uh, now since like about three or four years and Holly, the uh, Great Lakes National Cemetery, opened back in 2005. We have 544 acres. We have interred over 28,000 veterans and their eligible dependents. Right now we have a capacity of 244,000 that we can bury at the Great Lakes National Cemetery. And a prime example of the word getting out Two folks, when we go to these types of events, last year we interred or we buried over 4,000 veterans and their eligible dependents. That makes us the ninth busiest cemetery in the whole United States. And there's 135 national cemeteries. And for us to be where we're located, nothing against Holly, but when you're competing against people like Chicago and Portland and we're burying more veterans, than they are at their cemetery. That gives us proof that these events do help the veterans and we're glad to be here to present our information. At the Holly Great Lakes National Cemetery, we have 21 employees. All of us are veterans. For some reason, it seems like when veterans, we go deal with folks, we seem more at ease when we know that we're talking to a veteran because we know that They've, done, they've been through the same experiences and had the same experience that we've had. So whenever you call the Great Lakes National Cemetery, you have a question, uh, be advised that you are talking to a veteran. And we do know the lingo, and we do know the attitude, and we do know what it feels like not to be uh, helped. And we do present, we try to present the correct answers that will benefit you to have the burial in the National Cemetery. The National Cemetery Administration, we were getting a lot of questions as far as, well, what do I have to do to be buried at the National Cemetery? And before we came up with this idea, the, the, the only thing we really could say was, well, you have to die. <laughs> and we had a lot of folks, uh, especially in Michigan, I don't know why you guys, you guys are like the most prepared people. I'm from Texas. You guys are like the most prepared people, like, like to be the most prepared people. Well, what do I do to get into the cemetery? Well, you got to pass away first. But that wasn't hitting right with them. And I guess through the whole United States, the veterans were saying the same thing. So our, the, the wise men in central office came up with this form called the pre-need form. 
And what the pre-need form does, all it does is basically tell the veteran that there's a form that you can fill out and it'll tell the veteran that they are eligible or not eligible to be buried at the National Cemetery. I have some of the forms over at my uh, desk if you guys want to come by and pick one up. And what happens, you'll fill that out. It gives you the instructions on where to send it to, email it, you can scan it, uh, you can fax it, or you can send it through snail mail. I don't know if they still even do that, but they have uh, through the post office. And then uh, two months later, or within a two month period, they'll send you a letter saying whether or not you are eligible to be buried at the National Cemetery. You'll send in a copy of your discharge paper, your DD-214, everybody always talks about the DD-214, but we have to have the DD-214 as well. Send that in with that form, and they'll come back and they'll let you know within a two month period whether you're eligible or not. For the spouses, we get this a lot from the spouses. Mr. Luer or Mr. Director, do I have to fill out that form? You do not have to fill out that form. The eligibility will be taken from the veteran. If the veteran's discharge is in there and it's, it comes back as eligible, then the spouse is also eligible to be buried at the National Cemetery. Another question that I get is, does it matter who passes away first? When I was in Battle Creek, Michigan, I had a couple and my desk was right next to the uh, visitor center where they came, where they come in, the reception area. And I heard the uh, elderly lady telling our, one of our cemetery representatives, I need to speak to the director, which was of course me. And I heard that and I had nowhere to run. So <laughs> I sat there and waited for the elderly lady to come in and behind her was her husband, the veteran. And she says, Mr. Director, can you tell my husband that I do not have to pass away before he does to be buried here at the National Cemetery? And I kind of looked at I looked at him and he had this, you know, we had this sheep, sheepish grin on our face and I said, no. I said, he may have told him that before, he may have misinterpreted that before, but no, it does not matter who passes away first. And the spouse, the veteran does not have to be buried at the National Cemetery without the spouse using that benefit. So you can have a veteran buried in a private cemetery, but if the spouse wants to be buried in the National Cemetery, that is her benefit that she can use off her uh, the, uh, eligible veteran's eligibility. We do have uh, married veterans. Married veterans, they are all entitled to their own grave site. So if the spouses do not want to be buried in the same grave sites, then we can, we'll set aside a grave site for the veteran. So they'll, uh, uh, each veteran is entitled to their own grave site. On, we have our big day coming up. A lot of the folks in the NCA refer to as a Super Bowl of the uh, National Cemetery. That's our biggest day of the year. And that's on 28th of uh, May. The ceremony will be at one o'clock and again, uh, Mr. Wooten will be the master of ceremonies. If you guys have never been to the Great Lakes National Cemetery, just to drive out there to see the lake, and there's so many people now who uh, come in and say how beautiful the cemetery is, and Great Lakes was not around when my uh, spouse passed away, when my mom passed away, when my dad passed away. What we're having now a lot of is disinterments, where they're actually being moved from private cemeteries to the Great Lakes National Cemeteries. Um, I actually work for Michigan Veteran Affairs Agency, which is the state VA, if you will, um, not to be confused with the uh, national VA or the county VAs. Uh, we kind of go between, but our biggest, our primary role um, at MVA is the two um, retirement homes. Uh, so that's our main focus. Most of our employees uh, of 800 are at the two um, at the two uh, retirement homes. We do have uh, 11 uh, of myself spread throughout the state. We're uh, divided by Prosperity Region. Um, that was done uh, two years ago, and I'm the one for this area, and so I'm at Baker College. Uh, we have 1,200 veterans using benefits at Baker College. So that's the most bulk of my time is spent, uh, is, is facilitating the uh, GI Bill or uh, vocational rehab or another education benefit is what I typically do day to day. We do spend some time in Lansing, um, do legislative work as well. 
So we're uh, there. Uh, we work with, um, we have a call center. I'm not sure if the vets here um, have heard our commercials, 1-800-MICHVET um, or michiganveterans.com. We have a uh, call center, uh, help center in Lansing that is uh, staffed with uh, veterans themselves as well. Um, so if you're having trouble with finding out access to the VA cemetery, we can help facilitate that. If you need a copy of DD-214, we can facilitate that as well. Um, if you're needing education benefit information, that's one of us. Um, mentioned earlier about the, uh, the cemetery um, and why we're burying so many. Michigan has uh, 660,000 or so veterans. It's the 11th largest veteran population in the United States with no active military bases. So that just tells you how, how willing and able we are to defend the Constitution uh, and stand up for us. And we have 50,000 veterans that are uh, supposed to come home in the next 10 years, So, uh, which is going to just keep us uh, at the top of the list. Um, and again, with, with no active duty bases. So we do stay quite busy. Um, I told I would mention a little bit about the different education benefits. I often find, just because of the nature of my school that I'm, I'm stationed at, I'll have veterans come in um, with their grandsons or daughters that are, are applying for, for school. And um, one of the things that we have with the VA is called a Memorandum of Understanding, is that we will help facilitate those that are military connected. So does your grandfather, or your father, or your mother, or grandmother served in the military, or maybe you're in the guard, um, or served yourself in active duty? Um, as soon as they say yes, well, I'll get the grandparents in Korea, Vietnam era, and uh, never filed a claim. So we can, I can do that as well. Um, there's a lot of number of folks around here that can help facilitate claim filing. And uh, one such gentleman, Korean War vet, served the same era as my grandfather. Um, had never filed a VA claim, wanted to go back to school um, after retiring from GM and uh, got his claim approved uh, and um, then he went on to voc rehab so the VA then in t uh, what 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years later he was uh, able to use a, a, a education benefit from his service from Korea so um, there's lots of things that uh, we can find benefits that you may not think uh, that you qualify for or even knew existed. So it's always great to reach out to, uh, to us at 1-800-MICHVET, find out what you may be eligible for. Uh, we'll, hopefully we can, can help uh, facilitate a benefit or a need. And uh, on a personal note, uh, Roy had mentioned uh, about folks not knowing. My grandfather, Korean War vet, I was uh, stationed um, actually in Guam at the time of, uh, of his passing, and he was gonna have himself cremated because it was the only thing our family could afford. Um, didn't know about the National Cemetery, didn't know the benefit that he had. So luckily it was me serving that said, no, <laughs> we need to get him. But m there's so many times that folks don't know that they have that, that benefit. And if you haven't been to um, the Holly Cemetery, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, it, it will blow your mind. It is absolutely amazing. So thanks, Roy, for everything you guys do up there. It's great, great service. Um, I'll be around if anybody has any questions on specific benefits um, at the state level. Education is my forte, but uh, we do do full circle benefits counseling as well. Thank you. Guys. I appreciate the time. I will not be long. Of course, they say the best for last, so I'm not complaining. You know, <laughs> nah, everybody here is great. Um, and to those that served in the chair force, we appreciate your service. <laughs> now go Navy. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I served in the Navy eight years. Um, how about this? Yeah, so I served in the Navy about eight years. Um, I did a tour in Ramadi and I also did a tour in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Um, I served in the detainee ops um, while I was there and I worked on Crick Reaction, Crick Reaction Force. I think that's how you say it, Crick, something like that, QRF. Yeah, QRF. So I did that while I was over there. Um, so I, I work for the Detroit Vet Center. Um, what we do is, and I want to thank all the Vietnam veterans. Um, my heart goes out to Vietnam veterans. My, my dad is a Vietnam veteran. He was a Marine. And so you guys, of course, did not receive the care, the resources that we have, as you mentioned earlier, that we received today. Um, you guys did not get the smiley faces. You, got, you guys got spit on. You guys got talked about. And so it's the reason, uh, for that reason, is the reason actually why the vet centers were formed. Uh, we were formed because of what happened to the Vietnam veterans. So we were formed in 1979. 
And so I actually did not know nothing about the vet center services until I started working for them last year. Um, so I, I really consider the vet centers, they're kind of like a hidden gem in the VA system. We're part of the VA, but not part of the VA hospital. Does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> so what the, we're kind of like the special forces. So we're not bound by the same rules as far as funding for the VA hospital. Um, and the vet center is kind of an opportunity for you to be able to vent about your military service without the stipulation of being um, your benefits and stuff getting taken away. Does that make sense? So it allows each veteran the opportunity to vent about your service. Okay, we do groups, we do marriage and family counseling, and we do individual counseling. We also do domestic and drug abuse counseling. And so I've actually worked with uh, the Detroit Veterans Court in, um, in Frank Mur Murphy Hall of Justice. So the veteran court system is, is really good. And so one good way to use uh, the vet centers is, I know a lot of times you have that stigma of the VA hospital of, of going to the mental health there. In, uh, in, the, in the vet centers, it's a little bit more family atmosphere. It's a little bit more smaller, a little bit more inviting. And again, you don't have that stigma of going to this big place and everybody's there and you're just a number. You're not a number there. Everybody knows your name. You're met at the door. So uh, just real quick, like I said, I, I mentioned about we do readjustment counseling. So basically, we help uh, veterans readjust. We do the counseling side of things. Um, and then so, of course, we also do referrals and stuff. So, uh, and of course, I would love to talk to you guys later on um, about the cemetery and uh, different places. Because a lot of people, they call us. I come to contact with a lot of veterans. So um, I appreciate your time, Chairman. Um, that's how, all I have, really, in regards to the Vet Center. Um, we're open from 8 to 8. Um, so even if a veteran works or they're in school, uh, they, they could come to us and still be seen at nighttime. So, um, and we're open from Monday through Saturday. So if you was to go there right now, you could be seen. Um, it's not like the VA hospital where you have to wait two weeks, a month to be seen. You could be seen within a week or two. Um, you can like literally walk in today and be seen. Uh, we're open today from nine to five. So um, that's some of the benefits about coming to the vet center versus going to the VA hospital. We have facilities all over um, the Michigan area. So if you can't make it to Detroit or if, if Pontiac is closer, it's just all about getting that help. And that's the whole point is to get the word out. So because this is, it's, I believe the vet center, this is as veteran to veteran, I believe the vet center is our gym in the VA system that nobody really knows nothing about. And so, um, like I said, we would love to have you come to our facility. Even if you want to take a tour of the place before you refer people over there, feel free. Uh, we'll, 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 um, we'll, we'll be glad to give you a tour. And uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. So um, my name is Scott Rubin, and I actually do financial coaching for veterans. Um, now, the financial coaching program, um, I'm actually contracted by the government to offer this coaching for free. And there's no selling at all. It's just talking and trying to help the person's quality of life. Originally, this was geared towards um, younger veterans that were just coming out and transitioning over from a military lifestyle to a, to a civilian lifestyle. Um, because if you think about it, when they, were, when they were in the military, they were getting paid and all their expenses were taken care of. And so um, everything was kind of going good for them. They, um, they didn't really know what to do with their money. Um, and, and because everything was paid, they had this money and they were just kind of doing whatever they want. And that's what young people do. And, you know, I'm not, I was never in the military. But when I was younger, I, I did the same thing because they didn't have, you know, you could do whatever you want when you're younger and, and you don't have any uh, problems. But as they transitioned out, um, it became very overwhelming for the, for the individual veterans. And so they developed this financial coaching program specifically for the younger veterans, but I've been doing this for over two years now, and, um, and during this time, I was telling my bosses that, hey, everybody, it's not just young people that are struggling, it's, it's everybody. And if you think about it, finances are, uh, they're, um, you know, they're, they're very scary, and they're kind of stressful, very stressful in many situations. So um, I, we now have opened it up to any, any veteran that wants to just come and speak to somebody about how they can improve their quality of life. Now, everything falls on the veteran themselves. So what I'm initially doing is I'm just talking to them about what do you feel like you want to improve on? Do you want to um, work on your credit? Do you want to learn how to save money? Do you want to uh, start taking control of your money and not let your money take control of you? Um, and then we're just sitting and we're developing, we're sitting about it, we're talking about how we can benefit excuse me, how we can benefit the veteran. We're developing an action plan, and then the, uh, the key to this program 
is making them accountable for their actions. So I develop an action plan for them. I, um, I follow up with them and say, hey, how are things going? Do you feel like you're going in the right direction? So in essence, that's how I benefit the person. And I can tell you this much, the people that do take advantage of this program, I'm seeing amazing results. Now, they, they, it's kind of funny because they think that I'm the one that is, is um, helping them, but really they're helping themselves by coming to me. I'm just making them accountable for their actions. So I give all the credit to uh, the, the individuals that come to even sit down and speak with me. Um, I, I, but I, I'm, again, I'm telling you, I see incredible things. I see credit scores going up. I see them starting to pay down their debts. I see them um, uh, trying to apply for VA loans. And, um, and they're getting it feeling like, hey, um, I'm living within my means. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Now, again, there's no magic formula that I'm doing. I'm just making them accountable for their action. I think that's the key to it is making them accountable because if you do that, you, you definitely will see the uh, results. So I appreciate you giving me the time to speak today. I definitely will be here um, and around if anyone needs to uh, learn more information. It's a great program and everybody, if and it doesn't, and please provide the information to people that you feel like, hey, I went to this event, there's this guy, he seems like he, seems like he, uh, he wants to help, help a person. And if you know anybody in that position, uh, please do that. It, 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 I've helped a lot of people that, that don't even have jobs. They don't even have income coming in. I say, hey, no problem. Let's just, because I'm based in a Michigan Works location. Um, so I, I say to them, hey, let's just get an idea of what your expenses are, what kind of job you're going to need to make in order to live the way that you want to. Um, but I'm not here to judge, any, uh, judge anybody. I'm not here to put my values onto them. I'm here to work with their values and um, really get them moving forward. Um, and like I said, the people that want to do it, I give them all the credit. The people that don't want to do it, I say, look, it's not my fault, it's your fault. You have to care about yourself more than I do. And um, so I'm not, I, don't, I'm, I don't sugarcoat anything um, to the individuals. I kind of tell it like it is, and I get on them a little bit if they're not, if they're not putting the effort in. Um, because that's what a coach is supposed to do. It's supposed to push them in the direction, but you can't push somebody if they don't want to get the, if they don't want to, to do what, what they really should do to better themselves. So, um, but the people that do, they think it's the best thing that they've ever done. So thank you again, and uh, any questions, I'll be right over here. Thanks.